Welcome to my science tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at J.J. Thompson's experiments that led to the discovery of electrons. Now, up until 1897, it is believed that hydrogen is the smallest particle that you can ever have. And uh, nobody knew there was anything like subatomic particles. They believed that um, uh, the atom is indivisible. It's indivisible. So, J.J. Thompson did this experiment with this uh, setup that actually looks like a bottle. This looks like a bottle. And then we have these features that he puts in place. So he has an anode. He has an anode place over here. And this place is a cathode. This place is a cathode. He also has a vacuum pump. And he applies a voltage through this setup to the anode plates. Okay, so he actually pump air out of this setup to create a vacuum because gases conduct electric currents at low pressure when a voltage is applied. So he took out all the air through this channel and created a vacuum. After creating the vacuum, he applied high voltage from this setup here across the plates the two plates which is the electrodes which is the electrodes now he observed something something very interesting once the power was switched on the electric current was switched on he observed that light rays or a beam of rays moves through it from the cathode towards the anode they move straight from the cathode towards the anode and they appear on the zinc sulfide fluorescent screen. So this place actually, uh, this place is actually is like a screen where you can detect glows. So we observe that the, the cathode emitted this beam of rays that moves straight towards the screen. So let's call this place A. Let's call it A. Alright. His second observation was that the beam of rays were deflected from this negative plate, negatively charged plate, towards, towards a positively charged plate. So let's put that by a dot here. And the body is place B. So we can observe that this part, which is negatively charged, the beam was moving towards that part, but it moves towards what the positively charged plate. So that was the second observation. Now he also tried that with a magnet, and he found out that what the beam still move away from the negatively charged pole of the magnet, which means that there is an interaction between whatever is moving from the cathode towards the anode. And the magnetic field. Now he also observed that anytime he changes the materials, whatever materials it puts here, anytime he changes it, they appear to give the same result, which means they, they all give out a beam of electron that moves towards the anode. It moves from the cathode towards the anode. So these are the observations that I made. The first observation was that hot there has been hot a beam of ray that has been emitted and they will move straight towards the anode passing through this hole and appearing on the zinc sulfide screen as a glue and then he observed that these beams move away from the negatively charged plates towards the positively charged plates his third observation was that um, both magnetic and electric fields causes what the deflection of the rays that has been produced from the cathode. Alright, so his last observation was that anytime he changes the materials, the materials for the cathode, he observed the same results and even the electrodes when he changes them he still observed the same result. So these are the nice observations that he has made so now let's go ahead and look at 
the explanations and the deductions that we can make from these observations. The first deduction was that the fact that the beam was deflected by both magnetic and electric fields suggests that the cathode rays were, were electrical carriers, definitely. So once we have observed that the the light ray, the cathode ray from this place has been deflected by both electrical and magnetic field, that gives us um, a clear reason to suggest that they have what electrical charge. The second, the second deduction was that they get attracted towards a positive plate, towards a positive plate, and that seems to suggest that what they are negatively charged. They are negatively charged. Looking at the direction, looking at the direction from the cathode towards the the screen, it appears as if they move away from the negatively charged for a negatively charged plate and move towards a positively charged plate. So that suggests that what they are negatively charged, no doubt. Now the last deduction is that once they have been produced by different materials by which he tried the experiment with, he uses, remember he uses different materials, he changed the, the electrodes, he also changed the gases, he used other materials, but he still have the same observation. That means that the cathode rays were present in all matter all matters. Now the interesting thing is that they found this after he did experiments he uses mass the mass to charge ratio and what he found was quite interesting they are about they are about a thousand times smaller than hydrogen which means they probably have been found inside an atom that is that is a lemon. After this observation, J.J. Thompson came out with his own model of an atom and his proposal was that the atom is, is like, uh, is spherical, is spherical like this, oh, don't my, my spherical, is spherical and then it has this um, negatively charged particles that are stuck in it. He has these negatively charged particles that are stuck in it. Now, he said uh, the atom is neutral. Of course, atom is neutral. And he has these electrons stuck in it. And then the, the sphere itself, which is like, maybe we can liken this to, let's see, um, a guava. Not all guavas are purely round, but as when there's a guava and you have all these seeds that are stuck inside it, and then you have the altamus, you have the container which is positively charged mass. So the spherical structure is like it's like positively charged, and then you have the electrons inside it. So let's call this the spherical mass. Oh, sorry. Man. That is spherical mass. And he said they are what positively charged. Positively charged. And then you have the electrons inside it. We have the electrons. We have the electrons inside it that to inch ensure that the charge is balanced causing the atom to be to be neutral causing the atom to be neutral so this is um jj thompson's model of the atom so jj thompson came out with a proposal after after these observations he measured the mass to charge ratio which um oh the other way around the um charge to mass ratio is u over m 
and he found out that they are the same for all materials for all materials the, cha the mass of the electron to to mass ratio was the same for all materials so he came out with this proposal and said the atom he said the atom is a solid sphere of positive charge solid sphere of positive charge with negative electrons stuck uniformly in it the negative electrons stuck uniformly in it the negative charge balancing the positive charge to make the atom neutral so this is known as um this is thompson's proposal and this is how he discovered the electrons but it turns out currently that this actually is not a model for an atom after we have other researchers like um, Rutherford all the way down to Bohr where they get to know the actual model of an atom all right you have the electrons uh, on on the shelves and then you have the positively charged that are found in the center in the center of the atom that is in the nucleus which is something that is not that is definitely not the same as this model. It's definitely not the same as this model where you have the, the solid sphere and then you have these electrons that are stuck in it. You know, the current proposal is different from this one. Alright, so this is the end of the video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe.